Okay, here we have one, I make it bigger, then you see it better. One step, it's called heating, it, heating up. Heating up step. In this heating up step, you have this activation of outputs. And you can do it very simple in this way. In this case, it's generated automatic by this uh, Excel generator, but you can also do it manually just to say, and not flag 102.3 equals output. Very simple. And there is hold. Remember, in this FP1000X, it will be reset. You don't need to care about that. Yeah? So this is the activation of the output. Release of the DFM times. You're using time for transition, for next step condition. Yeah. But you need to release the time whenever you're not in hold. You can also do this in the FP of the unit. Yeah. Or you make it in all step blocks like this one to have the release of the time. And this one is for uh, transition. Next step condition, you check the DFM. In this case, it's a uh, temperature is okay. And maybe you say, and not flag 102.2, but it's not really necessary to have at least one cycle to be valid. One cycle. But this would be enough. Temperature okay. This is a condition. If this signal is one, it will go to the next step. You see how simple the step log is. You don't need to carry about the hole. You don't need to carry about stop and reset and set and so on. No, no, you can make it really simple. Decide the step log and you should do that for transparency. What you shouldn't do, you should not say set and reset. That's not so good programming. You can do it, but the better one is you make like this equals to activate the output. So you can make really a very simple structure of your program. I open some more blocks. Maybe we see some more functions in here. Meshing in, rest. Um, let's go ahead. Open some blocks. Nothing special here. Let's close it. Here you see again the activation of the outputs in here. And in this case, we have the signal POS, which means mesh ton empty. Mesh ton empty. Yeah. In this case, we are not calling, uh, we are not checking a DFM, but we are checking. So oh. close. We are checking uh, a digital signal, uh, which means mesh ton empty. This is a timer. There is a timer included. We have an input signal. And the output signal and they have the normally the output signal have this under pos and this should be used for all inputs why because in this case you can simulate it you have a faceplate i can show you in the picture there is one this is the empty signal you have a faceplate and you can make a simulation so for the testing fat you can simulate the signal for testing And normally you have this address, you have this address in here of this timer, not in this case, and you can see all of the signal in here. They have a parameter, delay on, delay off, for the signal which could be adjusted. Many times you need a little bit delay for the signals, and this can be defined in this face plate. Okay. So something in here, no, not interesting, not so exciting, not so exciting. Also, there in here there is a, a DFM, and the digital is combined and or uh, and the signal empty and the DFM. Okay, that's it. Maybe we have in the first step.
any message or something like that not in here not in here not in here here we have operator okay that's what I want to show you if you want to have an operator request you program it in this way then flag 102.2 set flag operator request and then in this faceplate in here this is coming up this symbol is coming up for the operator to confirm it will stop if you're programming in the proper way it will stop at this step unless the operator is pressing this button and then it's going to the next step this is a programming Oops, sorry. In the picture and this is a programming for it and flag 102.2 set flag 10 and there in this flag add not flag in this way you reset it and not flag 101.6 uh, you need to check it so we in mach jetzt da was ja das geht jetzt schlecht ja hm später später machen wir es äh 101.6 going to the next step if this flag is reset and it's reset by the operator if you press this one okay let's do one more message to make a message message um you have a condition for the message let's say when the full signal is coming up or when there is an alarm or any condition let's say in our case um it's a it's an input it's linked to an input in this case it's mesh chunk mesh tank full Oops, no, 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 no. No, it was the SCL yeah no okay never mind we take this input 10.0 and now we need to link it to the according interface flag of the message and this one is 88.0 and so on these are the messages starting from here 88.0 to generate the text uh, in the PCU server yeah when this flag is set to one in the PCU server a message is coming up here's the PCU server like this one with a text you're writing in a text file in which text file The text file you can go from the main menu text parameterization meltcom meltcom okay here is all the texts you edit manually for the information for the operator but it's not all there is also a parameterization for the messages to indicate message module message module whether it's a critical alarm or not critical and this is going by msg here yeah. by these two flags error message these two flags they influence the color of the text which is coming it's red it's green or something like that and the operator sees okay it's not critical it's just information or not okay anyway this is standard bromart it's only to give you a idea of the basic functions you're using frequently okay this is a template for one unit you can take a look with the most basic functions used in Braumart to see how you could do it how you could do it the manual the Excel and in the code you can see the programming for it and you can also test it with this system okay do we have some more I think so I think so saving energy and resources this is something which is interesting for the companies you can increase your profit by selling more product 
yeah, or by decreasing your costs. Also, this one will increase the profit, and that's for the management very interesting, and for the environment as well. There is a PowerPoint about this issue, saving energy and resources, humanity facing five big problems: energy, water, food, environment, and poverty. But number one is energy. Number one is energy, and it's very close, really, to water. Yeah. So if you're saving water, uh, if you're saving energy, you have a big contribution for environmental protection. Mm. For this one, we have an interface in Bromart for energy meter. UMS 96 is a profit bus to see the um, how to say the frequency, the voltage, the currents, the power factor, the power you are using at the moment. Um, they are not very expensive, but you can connect to the profit bus and get this data. And there is an interface in Bromart to see this data. But also for the Siemens one, which is called Pax Suite 3002, well, Pax 3200, yeah, this device. Um, also, we have an interface for it. We have a software integrated in this system. Um, to show the values. Load shedding. What is load shedding? Load shedding? Yeah, this is interesting. It's what is load shedding doing? Load shedding is doing um, is checking every 15 minutes about your consumption. And if your consumption is very high, you, you are charged a lot. You pay more if you're using more energy in a specific time. So in this case, it's good to switch off some mo motors, mm -hmm. for example, for the CO2 production or the air condition. If you have a peak demand, they don't like it. They don't like it, the peak demand, and they charge you a lot. And this unit, uh, integrated in Bromart, not integrated, but the add-on, you can decide... Oh, there is no text list now. Um, you can make a definition of priorities. The lowest priority is air condition. Yeah, the next one is CO2. And when the power is too high, it will skip, it will switch off these devices unless it's not really necessary. You need the condition to switch it on in any case. Um, that's mandatory. Yeah, if it's not yeah. enough CO2 or not enough yeah. cooling agents then you need to switch it on, but this with this one you can very easy, you can see your actual demand, you have an energy counter, here is the energy counter, and uh, it's showing you the actual demand, and depending from that, the system is switching autom automatic uh, specific units off and on again. Universal model. This one is for security. That means you can use this universal model for many different things. Let's say you have a moving detector or you have a LDR to see the light outside and depending from this one we switch on the advertisement mm. on and off. Or it's also a way by definition in this list you have an analog input or digital input and you can make automatic by this a programming in order to ensure uh, using less energy. That means we have a moving detector only if somebody's in the room, the air condition is on. If it's going out, the air condition switches off, like that. And then you can handle this one very easy with this um, universal model. Universal switch model, it's the name. Here's a manual for it, cooking with enthalpy. That's a way for the world cattle to cook based on enthalpy. That means it's a complex calculation, very complex calculation, but you save energy. But this one you need less steam. Yeah, you need some more measurements. This one are the inputs that you see the steam flow, steam temperature, pressure, condensate temperature, um, actual temperature, actual density. So we, so we um, and based on these values, you can calculate a good setting for the steam valve. Uh, 
Um, in version 7, that's the version we're using, it's possible by the recipe to define which output should be switched on. You need some more software, it's not that all is integrated already in the system, but it's not necessary anymore to do the programming in the PCU. You can also do it in the recipe by a bit field. And that's the interface, how it's looking in here. You see, zip light, temperature uh, control, blah, blah, blah. Um, that means all the elements in these units can dynamically be defined in the recipe and switched on without doing any programming by a bit field. And also the transitions, it's not only the, the ICM, it's also the, the next step conditions you can manage in the recipe. Mm -hmm. yeah? But you need to do some preparation. This is described in this document how to implement it. You need to copy some software in the PCU. But then you can do the most important things, let's say 80%, directly from the recipe. Also operator request, to generate the operator request and maybe alarm. That gives you more flexibility and more transparency. You see exactly in which step, which walls are switched on. And this also online, when you're running later the sequence, you see which wall is switched on and which not. It could be a, there is an error or something like that, and you can see online the status of the transition. So this one is a very modern way of programming. That means no programming but parameterization. Why? Because it's more transparent, it's more flexible, and it's more cheap. You're faster. The programming, it's coded in the software. You cannot yeah, modify it. Yeah. Yeah, you need to call somebody. Uh, yeah. But in here, you're very flexible. If you're a new tank or something like that, you can do almost by yourself. Now, this big field programming, it's uh, very interesting. There are different ways how to handle it. One is based on the recipe, and the other one is based on the process image. It can also be by a process image. Soft cell universal function. This one is, is yeah. We have a picture in here. This is a universal function. And um, we can do a lot of different things with one function. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the, the basic thinking. There's a short presentation in here. The soft cell function is based on the human stem cell. The nature is best. At least I'm convinced of it. The nature makes it best. And the nature makes one element, the cell, which is very universal and flexible. Yeah? And in the combination of these cells, they are making human and all the nature. So it's a very clever concept. And this idea of this software is to make one software cell, which is very flexible, yeah? communicating with the other ones. And then you say, okay, you do temperature control. You do flow control. You check an interlock. And you communicate with each other. Yeah? And what is integrated in this function? What is necessary uh, to check uh, input, analog input, and maybe digital input? Set point. We can say if the temperature is higher or lower or equal. Yeah? And then you do action, then you have output. But that's not enough, you also need a timer from 8 o'clock in the morning until 5 o'clock in the afternoon or something like that. And you need pulses. That means every minute for 3 seconds. Every 3 minutes for 5 seconds. And you need a delay on and a delay off. Yeah? If there is action, a short delay on, but you should not switch Im off immediately, so you need a delay off as well, that the minimum it should run one minute. And based on this, let's say, template of the nature, this soft cell had been designed to, um, once again, how it's looking. This is a function, how it's looking. You have, this is one cell. And there you see what all you can set up in this cell. The time when it should be switched on. 
the trigger point. And with this one you can do maybe more than 70. Uh, maybe. You can do a lot of different functions with it. A lot of different functions. Yeah. Temperature control without doing any programming. Yeah. That's a little bit like the, the, the MOF, the monitoring functions. Yeah. In um, in the brewery they have these steps, making these steps, but they have some functions which should run all the time like the temperature control. Like monitoring something, and this temperature control, and this is a soft cell. This is a function which is running independent all the time, checking the temperature. When the temperature is too high, open the window. When it's going down, close the window, for example. And this can be done by the soft cell. Okay, then we have some little bit more about the simul code. Um, also, in here, you have uh, the parameterization for the simul code. Oh, it's, it's not yet integrated. It's a device which is used sometimes in the breweries. In the manual for to manage motors. Uh, star delta going forward, going backward. The symbol code is by Profibus, and this is um, a tool to manage the symbol codes. And the other one is the G120. The G120, it's um, it's a variable speed speed drive of Siemens. Yeah, yeah like the Danfoss. The Danfoss is more popular in the brewery, but Siemens has G120, and also we have an interface to communicate with this G120. Okay, I think we are more or less through these functions. There are maybe some tiny more. Yes, this one is color for transition. Normally, when you get Brahma, it doesn't change the color in the status, but it's useful for the operator to have a change of the color. And in this case, you need to uh, change something in the INI file, in INI file, to have this color. Yeah, to see. What is really the line which is not uh, which is not correct? You don't know why it's not going to the next step. And if it's all is black, you, you don't see why. But if we go to status in here, I can show you. Really yes. this. Status. Status. Ini. And there you search for negative. Negative. Background color for negative. That's not the right one. It changed status for negative. Change color for negative status. And you set this one to one. Then you will have this color. Yeah, this color. It's very useful. You should do that to make it more easy for the operator. You have to think about. For you, it's a small effort, but the operator is working every day for 10 years on the system. And every day he might be annoyed or not. Yeah. So it's good to make it comfortable for the operator. Um, the S88 buttons. These 88 buttons. I showed you already in this um, image in here. It's not coming in here, you see? It's not coming. And to have these buttons active, also you need to change something in a, I've written in here, change in sys sequence control, EOP admin, I show it to you in here. To have it active and they are very useful to get in hold, to go step plus one, to go the next step, these buttons are very useful. But for this one to have it, you need to go To write this line, general enabling of EOP activation buttons, EOP admin equals 255, and then you have these buttons, which are useful to handle the process in here. These buttons. For example, this one is step plus one. Go to the next step, step plus one. 
There is a new function in here. Mult extended and fixed value extended. What is fixed value extended? It's um, the fixed value normally is just a DB. Stupid. You can write something, you can read something. It's not active. <coughs> but this is an active fixed value. You can convert or multiply the value. You can make mathematics with the value. You have an input. The input is in here. You have the input. And you can say with comma, or you convert from integer to real, from real to integer. It's also a conversion of the format available in version seven. In version seven, it's necessary, yeah, to sometimes to change the format and also to multiply by ten, by one hundred, by one thousand to bring the comma in the proper way. This is the use of the fixed value extended. You can have two inputs: data source one and data source two, and you can do any mathematics with it. It's open source. And you can do, if you have a specific mathematic, you can link it to one value and the other one, and then you can make uh, sinos or cosinos, anything by your own programming um, with this DB. You have this type, the zero, it's a normal fixed value, you can use it as a normal fixed value. If it's one, it's integer to real, two is real to integer, three is some more other functions. So it's also a little bit a universal function for your specific uh, programming and the mult extended the mult extended something it's not enough mult this one <coughs> is um, extension of the existing mult that you have more but also you can change the comma you have an integer output a real output you have different inputs and different outputs so it's much more flexible and you can also make some calculation in this mult extended to adapt to the um, proper way you need after that. Okay, I think this is more or less the most important functions which are available at the moment. It will be extended anytime. I can make support if you have questions on it, you can contact me to uh, give you feedback and um, to make it better and Take a look anytime that new are coming.